With long, deliberate strides, whooping cranes stalk the salt marshes at Aransas and Matagorda Island National Wildlife Refuges, acting as if they own the place. And in a sense, they do. For whooping cranes' association with this marshy kingdom goes back further than mankind's claim to this land. For thousands of years, a flock of snow-white whooping cranes has come to these wintering grounds along the Texas Gulf Coast. Every fall, they arrive to spend the colder months in vast, open salt marshes, rich with crabs and other marine life. And every spring, the birds leave the refuge to migrate north, undertaking an extraordinary 2,500-mile journey to nesting grounds in northern Canada. This impressive migratory ritual would be cause enough to admire these birds. But there's another reason to feel awe in their presence. For the birds at Aransas and Matagorda Island are the last natural flock of migratory whooping cranes left in the world. Due to loss of habitat and hunting, their population had plummeted to about 15 birds in the 1940s, making them one of the most severely endangered species on Earth. Although they remain on the endangered species list, the cranes have staged an impressive comeback. Today, the flock numbers about 200 birds. Understandably, a glimpse of these elegant birds is the highlight for many refuge visitors. Whooping cranes get their name from their shrill trumpeting call, which can be heard for nearly two miles. They're also distinguished by their unusual height, at nearly five feet tall, they're nearly as tall as a human. But whooping cranes are not the refuge's only reason for being. The Aransas and Matagorda Island refuges were established to protect the vanishing coastal prairie habitat and the diverse wildlife that use these areas, including many types of birds, as well as mammals and reptiles. Aransas is located along the central Gulf Coast of Texas. Matagorda Island is a narrow 38-mile long barrier island, about five miles off the Aransas shore. The two refuges together encompass about 115,000 acres. Aransas and Matagorda Island are both part of the century-old National Wildlife Refuge System which is administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The system includes more than 500 refuges throughout the United States, established to conserve, protect, and enhance fish, wildlife, and plants and their habitat. For all of the appeal of whooping cranes, Aransas and Matagorda Island have other species of birds to brag about, nearly 400 of them, in fact. Many wading birds and shorebirds are attracted to the refuge's nutrition-packed marshes and bays. One of the most striking is the roseate spoonbill. The bird gets its name from its hot pink plumage and its large flat bill, which it swishes through the water to spoon up small fish and crustaceans. While the roseate spoonbill is one of the refuge's year-round residents, others like neotropical songbirds and hummingbirds are temporary visitors. They stop at the refuges to rest and refuel in spring and fall as they travel between northern breeding grounds and Central American wintering areas. Other birds live here for a part of the year. Ducks and geese are common winter visitors. If waterfowl, wading birds, and songbirds are present in large numbers, other birds are so rare that a glimpse of them is a special treat. The endangered aplomato falcon falls into this second category. Its numbers have dropped dramatically throughout the southwestern U.S. However, in recent years, biologists have released a number of aplomato falcons on the refuges which contain the coastal prairie habitat favored by the birds. Some of the falcons have begun to nest, and hopes are running high for a resurgence of these quick-flying raptors. Another refuge resident, the American alligator, seems solidly on the road to recovery. Thanks to protection of habitat and restrictions on indiscriminate hunting throughout its range, the alligator has been taken off the federal endangered species list. Aransas and Matagorda Island have more than 600 of these hulking reptiles, which can weigh up to 400 pounds and reach lengths of 12 feet. They can be seen year-round, 
patrolling freshwater ponds or marshes, or basking on sunny banks. Though alligators may look lethargic, they can move surprisingly quickly, and visitors need to keep a safe distance. The javelina is another curious refuge inhabitant. This native mammal is a distant cousin of the antelope and bison. People often confuse javelinas with another refuge resident, the feral hog. You can tell a feral hog by its bristly back, floppy ears, and straight tail. They are the offspring of domestic hogs that mated with wild boars imported for a local game preserve. Feral hogs are aggressive foragers that compete with the other native species for food and root up soil and plants. Because the hogs have large litters, the refuges face challenges controlling their numbers. One way the refuges attempt to check the hogs' population is to allow hunters to take them during fall recreational deer hunts. But hunting is only one of many strategies used by refuges across the country to manage the lands and wildlife under their care. One of the most important management tools employed at Aransas and Matagorda Island is prescribed burning. On a regular basis, refuge staff deliberately set fires in certain parts of the refuges. These carefully controlled fires are designed to mimic the role that wildfires played in the past. The controlled burns help restore the area's original coastal prairie habitat by checking the spread of invasive shrubs and trees. Many wildlife species benefit from this management approach. For example, controlled burns create open grassland areas where raptors can more easily hunt for small birds and reptiles. While some parts of the refuges are off limits to visitors to limit wildlife disturbances, visitors have plenty of opportunities to view the refuge's creatures. At Aransas, a 16-mile automobile loop winds through varied refuge ecosystems, offering glimpses of a rich array of wildlife. The tour loop includes a stop at a 40-foot-tall observation tower and a nearby boardwalk that meanders through a salt marsh. For a more intimate view of native plants and wildlife, Aransas also has nine hiking trails of varying lengths. These offer views of everything from bitterns to butterflies. One popular trail is the mile and a half long Heron Flats Trail. As its name promises, visitors can see herons and other wading birds feeding in the tidal flats. The trail also leads through freshwater sloughs and shell ridges with their attendant wildlife and plant communities. The Big Tree Trail winds through a different habitat, an enchanted forest of 500-year-old live oaks whose branches have been twisted into odd artistic shapes by prevailing winds. Generally, the best times of day to view wildlife are early and late in the day, when many species tend to be more active. However you choose to enjoy the opportunities offered, please stay on the trails, watch wildlife quietly, and maintain a respectful distance from any wild creatures that you may see. And remember, feeding wildlife is dangerous. To help visitors learn more about the creatures they encounter, the refuges offer guided hikes and interpretive programs. The Enron Environmental Education Center on Matagorda Island offers hands-on environmental education classes. Some visitors think the best way to experience a wildlife refuge is with the aid of a fishing rod. Bank and wade fishing are available at both Aransas and Matagorda Island. During the winter, special access restrictions are imposed to avoid disturbing the cranes. Other people seem to enjoy nature best when it's seen through the lens of a camera. Photographers find endless photo possibilities at the two refuges, especially at scenic Matagorda Island. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department operates a ferry to the island from Port O'Connor, Texas. People can also take privately owned boats to the island, which has windswept beaches and a picturesque lighthouse. The lighthouse, made of cast iron, was erected in 1852 after a series of shipping disasters in the area. Another historical attraction is the island's Civil War trenches. These are the only remains of traces of an 1863 battle in which Union forces took control of the island in order to cut off Confederate supply lines. 
In addition to recreational activities, some people like to spend time volunteering for the refuges. Volunteers can get involved working on biological, public use, and maintenance projects. For information about the volunteer program, please check with the Refuge Visitor Center or office. No matter what visitors choose to do at Aransas or Matagorda Island, they can't help but be struck by the unexpected beauty and profound tranquility that greets them here. In a world where we are increasingly detached from nature, a visit to Aransas and Matagorda Island National Wildlife Refuges reminds us of the value of maintaining strong connections with the natural world.